A couple housekeeping items. Go on. First off. There's a train. We're recording with the windows open so we get a nice cool breeze. I don't think you're gonna, I don't think they're actually gonna hear much of that, but that is the train and it'll be gone in three, two, one. Wow. Second housekeeping item. Big, Big news. news if you've Big been following news. the controversy on Instagram <laughs> that is the Beach. new dilemma, oh sorry, of my life. What do you think? I think I'm a convert. Sorry, LaCroix. We have to change our core values on our about page. <laughs> oh crap, that's right. <laughs> oh I'm man. I'm laughing because, okay, let's back up for a moment. My friend Margaret, who's wonderful and lives in Boston, was here for a visit. She told me about this thing called Spindrift. I'd never heard of it before. Turns out, right next to the grocery store, <laughs> next to LaCroix, completely have ignored it forever. And- Not, not an ad, hashtag not spawn. Hashtag not an ad, not spawn. It is basically like LaCroix, but it's made with real fruit. Instead of natural essence, which no one knows what the heck that is. And Jason and I have had this conversation for years, ever since we've been like, Drinking you know, LaCroix drinking daily. Drinking LaCroix in bulk. We're like, what is this natural essence? Yeah. And how do they get it so flavorful without mentioning any ingredients? Yeah. And it's very suspect to us, but we've just kind of been like, it's so delicious that we don't care. But now that we know that there's an alternative, it's disrupting the household. It's a real, it's a real bit of drama. So anyway, let us know what you think. Have you had Spindrift before? Do you have an opinion? Spindrift versus LaCroix. Do you give a shit? <laughs> <laughs> At all. All right, uh, third housekeeping item. Yes. I got summoned to be a juror. Very excited and wanted to share with everyone. Now, did you tell everyone that you uh, pushed back your date so that it wouldn't interfere potentially with our vacation that we're taking in a few weeks, only to realize that you pushed it back to the launch date. Day after launch The day after this, the launch of Wandering Yeah. Uh, yeah, oversight. I did that. I mean, I could probably move it again, but then I think I'd end up on a list of some sort, which is like, jury you're every month, a, every month, every month. Two strikes list. Okay, so the point of this unedited meeting, number one, is to show you my very clean journal, but also to show you that somebody else is using a pano book now too. Uh, and it's not clean. I'll put a link in the description to pano book just because I want more people to use this notebook. It is a really great notebook. Are you loving it? I do love it. Have you gone horizontal or only landscape? Uh, okay, those are the same thing. <laughs> so, that was a trick question. You can't trick me, Jason, That's, if that is your real yeah. name. Um, I go portrait. I go vertical. Vertical. Yeah. yeah. I tend to only go vertical, too. Anyway, uh, all right. So the point of this meeting. Tell the, tell the kind folks at home. We printed off papers. There are handouts. Okay, so uh, we want to try and get through a bunch of stuff in this meeting, but take you guys along with us on this journey. One of which we have been talking about, I'm gonna talk about these pieces of paper first, is the output of hours that we are putting into the different parts of marketing, promoting, and continuing to grow Wandering Aimfully. And so we wanted to look specifically at, let's say I'm making a video. Well, what does that look like from a time perspective? I'm gonna estimate that out. We're gonna think about blocking off certain days for certain tasks. So maybe Tuesday would be filming the Wandering Aimfully show. Okay, that's gonna take a certain amount of hours, let's block it off. Then what we wanna do is look back at all the hours blocked off and go, is this a life we want to be living? And do these things all contribute to the most important thing, which is getting people to purchase our membership uh, and also add value to the people who are already there. And prioritize some of those efforts and say like, okay, if if the video editing, let's say, is taking six hours. You feel that breeze? It feels so good. Yeah, I opened the door downstairs. If it's the nice. video editing is taking six hours and we see, oh, that's only contributing to basically the top of our sifter, because you guys know we don't like the word funnel, but our like sifter funnel. here, um, let's actually take a critical look and say, is that really time that we think is worth it? Do we think that's gonna build up in the long run, yada yada. But also, as Jason said, the really important thing about this is so few people in the midst of building things take the time to go, huh, this thing that I'm building, what is it gonna look like in my life it, to up to keep it up and on right. an ongoing basis to promote it to update content to do all these things I admittedly this would have been a very helpful exercise um, when I was doing <clears throat> getting choked up um, my ma my monthly magazine call your soul yeah so this was a project I did a few years ago that did not work out I only was able to keep up with it for about four months um, it was this monthly digital magazine and it's because I 
way underestimated how much it was going to require to do it all myself to create the content and to then promote it at the same time because I didn't do this exercise. Right. So I, I think, yeah, the other really important thing that we want to take away from this as well is to build a schedule for ourselves. Yeah. Like right now, I mean, especially while we're building, but if we weren't building Wandering Aimfully, our schedule is so ad hoc. And when you work for yourself, it's very difficult to kind of set a schedule. And some people who are really good at this, they, you know, they call it batching and they'll do like all this stuff on certain days. We've just never done that. It's never felt mm -hmm. like something we wanted to do. But I think that's also because we've never really been working on one thing that we're really excited about. Yeah. And so I hope that, that this framing will help us do that. Definitely. And a key takeaway too, for any of you out there, we love flexibility. It's one of our like core values. It's very important to us. And so for a long time, I specifically was very anti-calendar blocking. I just thought, that if I was gonna have certain things on certain days that was way too rigid for me. As it turns out, having a schedule that you can actually be flexible with is the best of both worlds. So you wake up in the morning and you know, okay, I have a general idea of what I'm supposed to be getting done today, but if you wanna move things around, you can. And so that's also just an important point about this is we're not trying to write out a schedule of like, here we go, we're gonna every week, it's gonna be the same, it's gonna be monotonous, we're gonna check it off. It's like, no, let's just say, okay, if we can designate certain tasks to certain days, let's try that out for a month and see how that works. And also assign those tasks as rigid or flexible. So there are some things that are going to have to be done every single week, like getting a newsletter written, uh, that has to be done, but we also wanna get well ahead of that so that we can be a little bit flexible with our rigid mm -hmm. uh, things. So uh, that's gonna be these papers, but these are gonna coincide with this paper, yep. which we wrote, and a blog post about Caroline came up with this amazing framework. Uh, it's called the Customer Journey Marketing Plan right now, which is not a great name. We need to rename it so it's something catchy we'll and memorable and sexy fun. and cool and whoa, what is that? Um, we want to do that for you guys so that you can use this as well. But that, that post that we wrote about this, the details, the good bit about it, because I think we could go into further detail of how to do this yourself. If you wanted to check that out, if you wanted to pause the video right now, there's a link in the description to this post. You could grab your own version of this. You can download it. You don't have to enter your email. We don't need any of that crap. But if you really like it, then you can enter your email and we can email you about stuff. But you can follow along with this because we're going to go through it lightly and kind of go on this journey with you and you can maybe fill in the blanks for your own business. And the idea, just to give you a quick overview, is that here with each of these pink steps, maybe you'll cut in some B-roll, just some light B-roll. Wow. That'd be great. Um, Producer credit. That you can see you're basically following, as it says, your customer on the journey from basic stranger, like they just landed on your website, all the way to an advocate. So they're gonna tell their, they're not only gonna buy your product, they're gonna tell their people to buy your product. That's a big, pretty big leap. So there are all these stages that need to happen in between. And the reason I created this worksheet was so that we could basically lay out each of our marketing ideas and understand how that was contributing to getting a customer from one step to the next. So what gets somebody from landing on our website to signing up from our email list? What gets somebody from signing up for our email list to consider buying our product? What gets somebody from considering buying our product to actually going through and you giving us money? You don't have to hold it awkwardly like this anymore if you don't want to. That's the point <laughs> of this worksheet. And so what that does is you start to realize every single marketing tactic that you have, you know that it's contributing to an overall purpose and that purpose is getting paying customers and hopefully getting them to get other people to be paying customers. And so the reason I printed this out was so that we could look and see, okay, in terms of ongoing tasks, what of these marketing um, tactics are going to require ongoing effort? Writing blog content, posting YouTube videos, um, having a monthly newsletter to all of our members, uh, keeping up with our community, all of these things take time and effort. What of those things needs to take time on a regular basis? And then we can go to our weekly calendar and then our monthly calendar because weeks where we're, we have the sales window open, if you don't know, we're doing um, an open membership basically once a month is when we open sales and then we close it down. So that's gonna look a little different. So that's why we have the monthly and the weekly. Whoa. I really could have used someone to write week and month on mine because I thought they were the same until I was just told. Yeah. So well, maybe if I you're at about, home and you're also using these sheets that we haven't I had about 10 you, minutes to create and print them out before a meeting because my partner is a real stickler for time. Blacksco, the dog who's drinking an entire bowl of water right now. You gotta tell him to stop, that's too much. Hey Bubba. Come here. Our dog does this thing where he usually drinks water twice per day and it's too much. And inevitably he will throw some of it up and it's not fun. Hey Plax. Hey bud. Now's one of those times when he's drinking. All right, we, uh, I'm gonna check to make sure this is still recording. Where are we starting with this? And also do we have anything else that we're trying to accomplish? 
We just want to say hey to everybody. We haven't had an unedited meeting in a while, and we just want you to know we're still working on stuff, and we're so excited, and we really like you, and thank you for watching. Yeah, but okay, that's great. That's great for them. Yeah? I meant for us. Like, what? is there anything else we were trying to accomplish in this meeting? Do you remember? No, it was really just the thank you, bud. That's very sweet. That's using me as a napkin. Thank you. Gross. Um, no, I think it was just to... If I recall correctly, it was really just to figure out the ongoing basis and setting up the schedule and stuff. And also considering some of these marketing ideas that we haven't like fully evaluated. Hey man, you gotta go the other way. There's cords. Back up, back up. Oh boy, no, no. oh boy. We're going through the cord forest. Did he make it? Yeah, Like American did. Ninja hey, Warrior back there. Come lay down, come lay down, come you lay down. You did it, you, get, you move on to the next round, good job. These are unedited. You get to you know see when our dog almost tears things around. Okay, so I think a good place to start would be to go through this worksheet okay. and uh, I've already started kind of highlighting things that require time on an ongoing basis uh -huh. and anything else that we left off of here. Now, do we want to write down some estimated time before we start blocking things off? Yes. Like how do you want to, that's what I think. So this? I think like we go through, okay. make sure that we feel good about all the things that we've identified as like ongoing things. Okay. And then like, for instance, one thing I totally forgot to, uh, include in here was like, um, like our, our weekly newsletter. So I, I put right. the onboarding sequence, but I didn't put our weekly newsletter. Write it in. Okay. So what we're gonna do for you as well, since you're a fly on the wall in this, and as I mentioned, if you wanna download this sheet at the post that's in the description, you can kind of follow along, as I think we will explain a little bit more of what each category means mm -hmm. so that you can really get value out of this, but also so that it can stay fresh in our minds because last time we talked about this was about a week ago uh, and we've done a lot of other stuff in between then. So. Really, it's just for me. Like, I don't know what's going on in this sheet. Yeah, so. and a framework is only helpful if you understand it and you're. I mean, we just made this up. So, yep. although okay. I did, I did search customer journey marketing plan, and it's like for sure a thing. But I like to say that I came to it on my own, obviously. You did. Um, All right. So stage one, we're doing before that. Yeah. So even before awareness. So should there be another stage? No, it's not a stage. All it's right. just like the top of the sifter. It's like oh, where you, do people? You almost said it. I know. Where do people even become into our awareness? <laughs> come into awareness that we exist. And so one more, let's try one more time. When do people become aware that we exist? Noise. <laughs> <laughs> Words. Yeah. Um, so I wrote 90% organic search and possibly social and word of mouth. So well, hold on. Let's, so let's slow yeah. down a little bit. Let's sure. make sure that that's like clear. Yeah. Cause I think we just jotted that stuff down. So yeah. people become aware of wandering aimfully yes. through right now, a bunch of blog posts and articles that we've written that are getting organic traffic through Google. Yes. Uh, so we're assuming that about 90% of that traffic is coming from those posts and to existing articles that we've written. Yes. And, and also I'm thinking of this in the future. So like based on our, our content strategy of like yep. doing all of this content migration and SEO, then we're trying to get to the place where most of our people coming into our sphere, into yeah. our sifter, are coming from organic search. Because if that's the case, that's awesome because we don't have to pay for anyone to, to be aware of us. Does that right. make sense? Okay, so 90% we're assuming is gonna come from organic search through, through Google and whatnot. Yes. Uh, the other 10% is gonna be a mix between social media and word of mouth. Yeah. Um, social media right now, I would say, is probably two to three percent of our traffic uh, to our various websites. So I think that's probably pretty fair. And we're hoping that that increases as we plan some of this stuff out and start talking about the things we're gonna create. So that will be the YouTube channel, that will be our Instagram uh, presence and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then word of mouth, I, I don't think we're gonna be doing anything to really make that happen other than just... No, and that was more of, if we do our jobs correctly, people get from stage one all the way to stage seven, where then if we have some sort of affiliate program... Step by step. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you don't go straight from oh, you guys exist to, here's all my money and also I'm gonna tell everybody to buy stuff. Right. That'd be amazing, but that yeah. doesn't that's like a That's like a 0.001% right. of your customers. But the point of this whole thing is like, if you can get somebody from here, from awareness all the way to advocacy, then they're telling their audiences and basically it's then feeding this again, right? Because then their audiences are hearing about it, that's how they get awareness, and then, what are you, are you distracted? What are you doing? Uh, he's just doing stuff, well, he's just being a dog. No, but you're not listening to me. I am listening to you. Mm -hmm. I am. We're good. Don't worry. Don't have a blowout fight. We don't need another one. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So what that's, did I just say, though? that is how people, well, it doesn't matter. That it, is how. Wait, but what did I say? I forgot. 
That is how people uh, let it slide find our site, or that is how they find your site if you're defining it for yourself. Uh -huh. um, so that gets us to awareness, stage one. Exactly. Okay. So um, the first step that we're trying to get people to is from awareness to interest. And that just means like, okay, I'm, and I'll help by like saying the definitions and I write these more clearly in the blog posts. So you can kind of, and, and listen, you can make up your own. That's why I left them blank. Like whatever stages make sense to you in your mind, but these were pretty clear to me. So awareness is I land on your website. I've, I now have heard of Wandering Aimfully, cool. But I don't know anything about you. I don't know if I like you. I don't know if I resonate with anything that you have to say. Interest is I like you. I'm interested. I feel like what you're talking about is in the sphere of something that I'm interested in. Does that make sense? So to get somebody from just having heard about us to all of a sudden they feel like they're interested, um, I wrote down partially some of the things that could help get them to interest would be our blog content. Yep. So in my mind, somebody, if they come from organic search, they land on a, a blog post, they were searching for something we're writing these very thorough blog posts and suddenly, A, now I know these people are super knowledgeable, thorough, they're helpful, they're speaking to me. That person's thinking that about me specifically. You specifically. Right. They're, about me, they're just thinking like, wow, she She's great should designer. probably shower more often. <laughs> Whoa, you said it, I didn't. <laughs> okay, so, so what I wrote here was definitely the blog content. That's something that's gonna take on, if we believe that that's gonna help get people from awareness to interest, then that's something that we definitely need to do on an ongoing basis. Yeah, and I will say just to, I don't wanna like step by step break down every single like bullet point on this, but I think this is a very important one. Did. No, I mean like I don't wanna like give an example for like oh, every single thing. Sure. But I wanna say that um, I went back and I wrote, I don't know, I wrote something recently where I realized that Jason Does Stuff, the site where I've written content for the past four years, when it started out, there was no organic traffic. There was nothing. There were no posts. I mean, it was really just a thing on the internet that existed that no one ever heard of. And so I started writing content and in the first year, I went from zero to 100,000 unique visitors to the site and almost none of it was organic traffic. It was me sharing on Facebook, it was me doing this. And really, I think like 50,000 of those views came from one article that got shared because I wrote consistent articles every single week and like one ended up being good enough for someone to share yep. or whatever. Um, but what's really interesting is that, hey, no, come here. Hey, come here, stay out of the forest. Cliffhanger, what's interesting? What's interesting is that uh, then three years later, uh, Jason Does Stuff in 2017 had over 500,000 visitors and about 80% of those, 70% of those were from organic traffic. So what I, I say that to you, if you're sitting here watching this video and you're thinking, I'm only in like the very beginning or I'm in year one or I'm in year two, is the consistency, the good content, thinking a little bit about SEO, thinking mm -hmm. a little bit forward as we're doing with saying, we want 90% of our traffic to come from organic search. This is something you wanna invest in. It's something we wanna to continue to invest in. It is why our content migration has taken many weeks. Yeah. So I just yeah. wanted to just like point that out. Like for us, that's almost like the most important thing we have. Yeah, because again, it's not just investing in getting people from awareness to interest. Blog content is also what is then feeding the sifter. So if you have nobody, it doesn't matter how great all of your marketing tactics are through stage one through stage seven, if you have nobody that's coming even into awareness that you exist. Which is why people spend so much time on like, how do I automate all this stuff? And how do I have the perfect whatever, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it doesn't matter if you have 13 people coming to your website every week. Like it really doesn't. Right. All the other stuff afterwards, literally means nothing. Right. So if you are even overwhelmed by like all this stage of whatever, forget it and just focus right now on how you can get more eyeballs. I mean, you do definitely want to have a foundation of this stuff, but don't forget to focus on where are you getting those eyeballs from. Okay, so incredibly helpful content is our yep. number one thing from awareness getting yep. into interest. Yes, and then these other two things like the memorable inviting branding and the personality filled copy, we've those that will already be done. So it Which is need great because be... that, that's not ongoing work. Exactly. Which is really good. So um, you kind of do that once, move on. Right. Okay, so are those the only things that are getting people from awareness to interest. I mean, I guess we would say that's like YouTube would probably be another thing here. Right, which is why I wrote that up here. Um, definitely that would be, it would it would also be here, right? right? Because someone, if they land on the YouTube video, then the production quality of it and the content of it is what's gonna get people from awareness to interest. So, I mean, I'll just add it. In so are we one. doing YouTube slash podcast? Oh, that's a good idea. I kind of feel like the majority of traffic is going to come from YouTube because yeah. YouTube is the second search engine on the internet, the second largest. So, and podcasting is not very searchable. Yeah, but 
I don't think a large portion of people are gonna organically search for our YouTube videos. And I mean, that would be great down the road, but I don't think we should have an expectation that that's gonna be a big traffic source. No, but I just think if we think long term, if you're thinking that we are going to make videos that are about specific pieces of content or specific ideas or specific thoughts, that those become a searchable result, whereas a podcast episode never becomes a searchable result. Right, I understand you're comparing it to podcasting, right. but I'm saying that from the beginning, our YouTube yeah. strategy has been much more deepening, like yeah, yeah, yeah. much more in this it's category this. than this. Yeah, it's this. Like, no one's searching to find this. This is No, weird. exactly. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean it's this? Um, but I'm glad that you mentioned that because we definitely need to also realize that it's not just, it's even YouTube isn't really even up here, it's more down here. Right. And then, and I would actually even, okay, well then let's move on to from interest to consideration. So also on this worksheet, there's a little spot for you to basically identify an action step, which means sort of what's that milestone that gets somebody from one stage to the next. So if you're in awareness, if you have a customer who's only just become aware of you, we kind of have decided that they get into the interest category once they sign up for our email newsletter. So that's them opting in and saying, hey, I'm interested in what you have to say. Therefore, they move to the second stage, which is interest. Right. They're not just interested because they read a blog post. They're interested because they read a blog post and then signed up for the email newsletter. Right. Right. So without that exactly. action, they don't move forward. Right. Exactly. Because to me, if they read a blog post and they don't sign up for the newsletter, they weren't really that interested. Do you know what I'm saying? Like right. if you land on a new, a cool website or a person that just kind of came into your awareness, if, if you're truly interested in what they have to say and you think they could be helpful to you, you're probably going to take some action to keep up with them. Right. Um, you could even, you could even kind of argue that somebody, let's say following wandering aimfully on Instagram might move them to interest, but I don't think that's strong enough. Not going to do it. So stage two interest. So, All right, so explain interest. Okay. As we just mentioned, interest is, I'm interested in what you have to say. I think what you're doing is cool. Uh, this has nothing to do with what you sell. Right, at this point. And then what we're trying to do is from stage two to stage three, stage three being consideration. Consideration is, oh, I, know, I now know that you have this product and I'm considering if it's right for me and if I want to buy. Does that make sense? So there might be a ton of people that stay in this stage two interest forever. Yeah, yeah. those are like our 15,000 email subscribers we've had for years yeah. that have never purchased anything from us and just- And that's fine. Yeah. That you, but you have to, th that's why something like this is so powerful. Cause then you start to see, oh, like there's this whole group of people that are sitting here and I'm doing all this stuff to speak to them. But like, if it's not moving them to consideration and to purchase, then I'm not making any money from it. And I'm not- These are the people who have like, a hundred thousand followers on Instagram and they aren't making any money. Because no one's buying anything. Like unfortunately, like I don't mean to like- Unless you have like an influencer model and then it's a whole different worksheet, For right? sure, for sure. But I'm just saying like, I think the majority of people yep. in our space, they yep. don't have a business related to it. So. Okay, so if you, if now let's say a customer has opted into our email newsletter, they're in the interest stage, what's gonna take them from interest to consideration? So the things I wrote down were, were the working to live onboarding email sequence. Yep. So that's gonna kind of start to get those wheels turning at some point during, it's a four day email sequence that we haven't written yet, but if you read our other post next about- Next week, next week. Next week. Um, at some point we will talk to them about, hey, we do have this monthly membership. So that's how kind of the first touch point that they'll have. Um, and then the weekly newsletter is probably the biggest one. Um, and also, even if they're not, I mean, by this point, they should be aware that we have a membership, but also you have to think about it like, this is us getting a person to be so bought into what we're talking about that they're making a strong enough connection with us that they might then consider buying from us. So yeah, I think it's important to point out here, and again, I'm gonna go deep on some of these bullet points. Yeah. Um, what we want to do with the working to live email sequence when someone signs up for our list is, we want every single subscriber to go through that sequence before they get any content from us going forward. And we wanna test this because over the past couple of years, uh, we've done the normal thing where like someone gets a welcome email, hey, hello, welcome, How, what are you struggling with? Email, let me know, I'm so happy you're here. Next week they get an email from you about what you're doing, you know, and it just keeps going forward. And you don't know how bought in that person is to the thing that you're doing or if they're just a curious, you know, looky-loo or whatever. So we've been averaging, I think it's around 30 to 35 new email subscribers per day uh, over the course of the past year. And the problem is we have no idea if those are good subscribers or not. 
Um, what we can tell is that our list has a certain amount of growth, it has a certain amount of churn or unsubscribes, and then it, we've been selling something on a consistent basis, which is our Buy Our Future project, and we have had people purchase that at a consistent level. So like everything has kind of stayed in this like slightly upward uh, trajectory, um, but we don't wanna pay for a whole bunch of email subscribers who actually aren't really that interested. They just read one article and they're like, oh, these people seem cool, I'll give them my email and I never look at anything mm -hmm. again. So what we kind of want to do is take this approach and see how it works and test this. And this is an assumption that we're going to test is to say, here's four emails in a row. Um, and maybe we'll give people a chance to opt out of the working to live thing. Like maybe they already know it, they've already been through it, whatever. But it's every single day after they sign up, they get these, these four emails in a row. And it really hammers home that like, this is what we believe. This is what we want you to believe. This is the life that hopefully you want as well. And you're figuring it out for yourself and whatever it means for you. And if you don't like this, please unsubscribe. And so really trying to get an extremely high quality subscriber through that, because then we know, I think one of two things. Number one, like Caroline said, they might be interested in buying our membership right then because they've been through working to live. Maybe they've read our other stuff and they're like, guys, this is me. Yeah. Like you are talking right to me. This, I want my life to be set up the way that I want. I want my work to support my life. Um, and I'm ready to buy Wandering Gameplay because you have all the tools that I can like do this in the community, blah, blah, blah. So we want to give them a chance at the end of that sequence to say, here's the Wandering Gameplay membership if you want to check it out. Or if maybe we don't sell it, maybe it's not during a sales thing, whatever that work looks like, we now know that that person is going to continue to open emails if they stayed on the list. Because if you get four emails in a row from someone in, a, in four days, you're probably gonna unsubscribe if you don't open any of them. Right. Because I know I've done that, like I've gotten someone's email course or whatever, and I get, I'm just like disillusioned by the fourth day or fifth day, and I'm just like, I'm out. Like yeah. this wasn't for me, I didn't really want it, like I'm gonna unsubscribe. Yeah. So that's really our hope is that we can really create a very strong subscriber instead of just trying uh, to build up numbers for no reason. Yeah, it's really about filtering people. Like you said, um, the art of making it hard. Yeah. So you- Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Still trying to find a good name for that. I just had this thought, this like recurring thing of, we wanna make things a little bit more difficult for our customers, for ourselves, and that it's not just so easy to sign up or to download or whatever. We wanna make it a little bit more like, hey, you gotta put in some work and you have to believe in the Which work. Which does go against conventional wisdom. And I know that, again, you have to take this advice with a grain of salt because if you're at the beginning of your journey, you might want it to be a completely frictionless experience, right? Like you might wanna get people on your list as easily as you can because you just need to kind of get that momentum going. But for us at this point, it costs money to have subscribers on the list that don't ever do anything. And we really want qualified people to be in the community. So by now switching that traditional advice to making it difficult, not difficult, but you just, you actually add a little bit of friction. So I would say that adding a four day email sequence right at the beginning really is going to vet people and make sure that they're interested in what we have to say. And so, I would say interested on two levels. One, yeah. they're either gonna potentially buy, cause that's our goal, or two, they're gonna stay subscribed and stay opening the emails mm -hmm. and be like really excited to receive the content. Like it's not just about making the sale, it's also about having a really good subscriber. Yeah. It's funny, I just realized that basically everything in the interest to consideration bucket is really about our email strategy. Yeah. So that's like kind of your website strategy and your content strategy is about getting people from awareness to consideration. And then your email strategy is really about getting people from consideration or interest to consideration. What did I say before? I meant awareness to interest. And then your email strategy is getting people from interest to consideration. So, um, cause another thing I put in here a little bit would be the sales emails during registration. So. I wrote these in both places because in my mind also, if they are, let's say they've, been, they've done working to live, they've gotten a newsletter like two weeks and then the sales window comes around and they see um, an email from us about what Wandering Infly can do for them and how it can change their life. So suddenly I'm not just interested in these people, right. I'm really considering buying, right. you know what I mean? Yep. Um, so what's our action step so here? I put the action step there would be they visited the sales page or they clicked a sales link during the monthly launch window, which tells us that they're now considering. Yep. Like if you make it to the sales page and you're reading it, you're probably considering buying. Yep. At least that's the metric that we can use to kind of gauge that. So from that category, the ongoing work is really the weekly newsletter. Yep. So Because the, the sales emails, and the onboarding sequence, that's all automated and we'll have that done before launch. So I guess the one thing we didn't do in the first section was write down any estimates of time for these things. I was gonna do that once we had our list So is this things. where your squares are? Yeah. Okay. Everything that I squared is like an ongoing uh, work. work. Okay, cool. 
All right, now moving on from stage three to stage four. So let's say now our customer has clicked on a sales email during the launch window. They've read the sales page. They're now in the consideration stage. You're a very considerate person. Thank you. Customer. And now we wanna take them to purchase. So if they're considering that next stage that we wanna get them to is they're actually going to pay us money and become a member. So how do we do that? Um, first of all, we have a well-designed clear sales page. We already have that, it's not ongoing testimonials and customer success stories. I will say the, like we have plenty of testimonials, but the customer success stories, like these like longer case study type things, that's somewhat of an ongoing work. Yeah, for sure. Um, so because we've talked about, uh, you came up with this idea when we were at our little French bakery coffee shop that we love down the street. Uh, it's actually like, right, it's like right there. Yeah, good job. It's like right there. They, they uh, care where that is. Yeah, they're like, oh, oh it's over ah. there. Oh, okay, cool, 360 this video, let me show you. <laughs> um, is that we, want to take some of our customers who we can clearly see they have some things working, they have some things going, um, and we can make some really tangible improvements and then publicly show that. So having open uh, like calls like this with them where like they would be on a Skype call or whatever, um, sharing our emails that we have with them. We're playing with a flamingo right now. Yeah, now's the time. So we're you drinking hear a squeak, water, yeah. we're licking our paws, we're playing a flamingo. Plax, not us, we're not doing that. So if you hear it's a squeak, it's a dog playing with a toy. Um, so we, we wanna take the customers who purchase Wandering Gamefully and help them grow their business and help them figure out their lives and show that publicly so people can see that on an ongoing basis. So the idea that you had was to maybe find someone once a month or once a quarter or something and show all the work that we're doing with them so that someone can follow along and they can be like, holy crap, I'm this person that they just wrote this journey about. I'm at step one. I'm literally, I can follow all these things. Yeah, I'm gonna join Watering Gameplay because I'm gonna get the exact steps. This is who I wanna be. And if you're a digital product person, I feel like this is something that we, as digital product people, so often kind of leave to leave off and don't invest enough time in because there's the, this mentality of like, oh, I just need to work for the next launch or I need to like, improve my sales page or improve my product. And all of those are great things. But if you don't take the time to actually follow up with your buyers and see if your product indeed did help them reach the benefit or the goal that you promised them, um, that is like such an untapped source of, of powerful like testimonial content um, for like your sales page or things like that. I know when I had my courses like Better Branding course and things like that, I did not do a good job of following up with those people. Oh yeah, it's some of the, like no one does it. So, yeah, and, so, and yet it's so powerful. And I know, and they would send me emails and they would say, thank you so much, you changed my whole business. And I would just forget to be like, okay, can you just fill out this like short survey of how I did and then publish it? Um, so if that's one thing that you know you're not doing in your business right now, take that little nugget and run with it. Cool, so okay. that's, that's specifically for consideration, but we also have, customer success time somewhere. Yes, down here, but okay. we're not gonna go there yet. Okay, I'm just making sure. Um, another thing that we have talked about that I think, oh, that was another thing that we were gonna do during this meeting is really talk about, do we do the, the themes? Do we do the lead up and all of that? So one thing I wrote here as a maybe from consideration to purchase would be this idea of the live workshop and a dashboard demo like once a month right before the sale or during the sales window basically. Right. So this idea that Jason and I had from a larger level was to potentially do these monthly themes, like content around a theme. So let's say that theme is finances, for example. And we publish content on the blog leading up to um, the, let's say the sales windows at the end of the month. So for the first three weeks of the month, we publish content, these in-depth guides. Here's specific examples. So uh, week one, we would say, here's our get out of debt guide that we've already written and we share that with you. But specifically, we want you this week to, if you're trying to get out of debt, fill out our expense tracking worksheet and fill out our debt payoff worksheet. And so we would clearly explain how to do that. We would walk you through it. So that would be like week one's content, which is helpful. So a lot of people deal with that. A lot of people would be really excited about that. Week two, maybe we would say like, all right, how do you organize your business finances and how does your business make money? And then where does that money go? Like, how are you actually yeah. managing all of that? Um, and what are your expenses and how do you track those and all that? And, and so hopefully give uh, some type of worksheet or tool or something that tracks that. And then in the third week, maybe it's like, where do you want to be? And so you kind of build a plan of the future. And maybe you go over the projects and projections worksheet yeah. and how to and God, plan ahead. So you would plan out like the next quarter, the next six months or next year. And so those three weeks would clearly be very helpful content around one topic, which is money or whatever. Um, and then the fourth week, 
would be where we open the doors to Wandering Aimfully, but at the same time, we have a, a live workshop that we do where we go over all of this stuff. We answer questions about this. We help people with it. Uh, maybe there's other information that we haven't shared if it's a bigger topic with a lot more to discuss. And then at the end of that, we say like, hey, if you want some hands-on help with this, we have more resources within. We have a debt roadmap that walks you through getting out of debt that you can follow along in the Wandering Aimfully dashboard. Um, and just like, if you wanna have constant contact with us about this or getting through this or other people, um, the community would be a perfect thing for you. So that's the idea with the themes is that they align with the sales window, but they also have a topic that we really like and have a lot to say on. Couple of thoughts that I had just when you said that. I also really like the idea of whatever the theme is, there's a very clear goal that we're having people work toward. Mm -hmm. So if, and then we create a road, cause roadmaps are easy for us to create. So, right. and then every month we create a roadmap and that's what we're able to show on the live videos or on the live workshop is here's all this. And then also we have this workshop or we have this roadmap inside Wonder Aimfully. Right. So that's an idea I had. The, the pros and cons of that, the pro is obviously that it, our content becomes very intentional. People who are already on the email newsletter are then feeling like there's a reason to keep up with it. And there's a there's this like very clear goal that they're working towards. And I feel like it's a very compelling sort of sales journey up until when the window is open. The, the downside of it is that it's very time sensitive. It would be hard for someone to just come in in the middle right. of a month. Um, also then how do we make all of that content evergreen? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what are the actual logistics of it? And then the third con that we've talked about is that it really ties us into scrambling to, to focus all of our energy on that theme for the month. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I think the one thing that I don't want to do, knowing that I know a little bit ahead of what our weekly schedules are going to look like content wise. I don't think I want to do a monthly theme. Promise, I think yeah. I want this to be more of like a quarterly because I think it's just more sustainable yeah. for us. Or maybe it could be one of those things where we sort of like the, like, let's say it's the last week of a month and our newsletter, we send out a regular newsletter and there's a call out at the bottom that says, Hey, our, you know, debt free challenge starts next week. And, and it's sort of this like mo one month that we dedicate to whatever that theme is. So it doesn't have to be monthly. We more, I think of it like, like Orange Theory, you know how they do like, they do this Orange thing. Orange Theory is the fitness routine we do now. They, they do this thing like called like All Out Mayhem or something like that. And it's like a May thing. So you like, it's a challenge around the month of May or whatever. They don't do a different challenge every month. It's just periodically throughout the year they right. do these like challenges. Yeah, I kind of go two ways on it. One, I just, I think that if someone were to drop in in like the middle of the month and they miss two weeks if we do this on a monthly basis, we could always think about that in the emails that we write and just be like, hey, if you're, one here. right, like yeah. you get back, like get week one and week two here if you wanted to do that. Um, I think the other thing too is like, a lot of times this is what so many of us do. We just overcomplicate because we think about all the scenarios and all the things and it's like, does that really matter? Like if right. someone just fell in and then they got this thing, or even if someone had been on our email list for two months, we'd never done a theme. All of a sudden we have a theme for a month and like, hey, whoa, I didn't sign up to like hear about debt and finances for a month. Like, okay, if that really pisses you off, then just unsubscribe. Because what we're trying to do is be helpful. Right. And this is something we believe is really helpful. And I know I've been on people's email lists where like it's, I signed up for one thing and then all of a sudden like they've shifted gears to something else. And it's never made me mad. I've just been like, oh, well, I'm not interested in this. They're going to be done with this in a month. And then I'll, you know, they'll get back to their yeah. regular schedule. I also go the other way with it though, where I think a mistake a lot of business owners make is before the thing even launches, they throw the whole kitchen sink oh, at their yeah. marketing plan. Yeah. And then they find themselves in a place that's not sustainable. Yep. Which is exactly what I'm talking about. Like I thinking know. a little bit ahead of all this. So, stuff, so my, my kind of thought is, what if we hold off on the workshops for now, yep. we see what our bare bones marketing plan gets us. Yep. And if we're bringing in less sales numbers than we would like, that's an easy thing to be like, Hey, now we're doing yeah. these challenges or whatever and yep. test it out. Yep. So I'm going to keep this on the maybe list. Okay. Okay. Yep. Like how dot dip dash dash line. I meant dotted slash Ashy dash. dashy, the sock company. That's a thing. Yeah. I wore a shirt for him in 2009. Come on, man. Keep up with my life. Jeez. It's only 1,600 sponsors you gotta remember. When did, we started it in 2010. I'm not responsible for what you did before. Oh, I wore them in an airport. I remember distinctly filming with a flip video camera. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so the obvious one in that stage, getting someone from consideration to purchase, the action step is they purchase. They purchase what? The Wandering Influence membership. And nice. that's how we know they're in the purchasing stage. Nice. Okay, 
So really the By the way, I hope this is helpful for you guys. You I, always do this. I know. Every but time. Then, but then people leave comments and they're like, yeah, that was helpful. I was really happy. And it makes me- So you're me, fishing for compliments. Yeah, it makes me feel good about myself instead of just like a bunch of people looky looing in videos. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, we need to, did you guys like this? We need like what? a clip that's called fishing for compliments section yeah. that just periodically we go, okay, and now we're going to fishing fish for compliments. compliments. Yeah, and it's just like multiple And then it's like, please tell us this is helpful because we really hope it is. Because Jason needs it. Yeah. Daddy needs the comments. I thought you were gonna say condiments. Daddy does not need condiments. I don't like condiments. Fun fact about me. Okay. All right, we are moving on to stage four, purchase. Yep, okay, so stage four, we just mentioned is purchase, you buy the thing. And then stage five is retention. So stage four is I just paid you money for the monthly membership, but maybe I got the welcome email and I just did I just paid you money and I haven't even used it. Retention, getting somebody to retention in my mind is they are now paying us on a on an ongoing basis and they're actually using the product. So it's getting someone from just giving us money to actually then using the membership, taking a course, uh, kind of entering a goal in their dashboard, like actually using the dashboard. So the things in that category to get somebody from just giving us money to then actually using the Wandering Gameplay membership because remember, you can't have somebody advocate for your product if they don't actually use your product. Yep. And especially if you have a recurring membership, that person is not going to stick around if you can't get them to use your product. Yeah, we... Just take a minute here. Um, we're, we're just not a fan of taking people's money and then having them not do anything. Like, right, it's the whole just... thing that's like, oh yeah, I hope that someone signs up for my monthly recurring thing and forgets that it's an automated payment and keeps paying me. No, no, it's not interested. We, we literally want your life to change if you buy this in some shape or form. So it's our job to figure out how to make that happen. So how are we gonna make that happen? Okay, we have the monthly insider email Yep. with the theme and the recommended course. So this is different from the yeah. public facing theme, but this idea of being like, hey guys, this month we're gonna focus on online courses yeah. or whatever, and then here's the resource. Easy the course. good thing is, is that we could literally make that an automated sequence to batch it, kind of? Well, not, no, I don't think to batch it. I just think like we could write out, let's say like six months or 12 months of that sequence and say like, okay, here's month one, here's what we think you should do, month two, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So it's like no matter, like whenever, whenever anybody signs up, they start with that sequence. We could, if the goal is to get somebody like onboarded in that way, but I see it another way, which is it could be um, the whole membership Oh, for sure. is going through it at the same time I so think, that they can talk about it in slides. Yeah, I think, I think there's something to be said for the theme being separate from the recommended course. Like, I think you're right. I think the theme needs to be something everyone's on board with. And I think that to me is a separate email from like a monthly, like just keep you retained, keep you using our stuff, keep you interested. So I think that there's kind of two, and that's why we're not just sending one, one email a month to our members. We'll probably send more than that. So this gives us an opportunity well, to think like- Well, that's what we need to talk about. Right. Like, well, do you want to talk about that now or different? Because because I, I guess the amount of hours is going to vary greatly depending on what we think that is. Right. You know, part of me thinks like we do these, we've done these quarterly calls that started with Buy My Future in 2015 and we just did the 12th one or 11th one. I can't mm -hmm. remember. I think it was 12th. I think it was 12th. Um, and I wonder if we start moving forward doing a theme between the quarters. So it's almost like when the quarterly call video happens, we, we announce, the next theme. announce the next theme, we work on that together through the community. Maybe there's emails that get sent out, you know, specific to that theme that we mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, people can opt in or out of them if mm -hmm. they want. So like, you know, we could then maybe pre-write stuff or not. Um, but then it's like, we only have to do four of those mm -hmm. per year. I also like it because three months is more, I think it, it's a longer time period where you can actually see real change, right? Like right. realistically, yes, you can create a course in 30 days, let's say, but you can't really see if that's gonna, you can't adapt, you can't launch it and then see what it's gonna do for your business. Like I feel like three months gives you enough time to do something and then actually see what the results are. Right. Okay. I think it just makes sense. I think it also gives us like a, a nice thing in the quarterly call to have people yeah. start looking forward to. And even if it's just like 15 people out of the community opted in to do this, we can take 10 minutes to kind of go over their results or whatever, or share some stories in the call, which is fun. And then talk about the next one and get people kind of excited for it and figure out a mechanism to get people to 
like, hey, we're gonna send an email about this next week, so just remember to opt in when you get that email mm -hmm. that you're like in for this because you wanna get uh, a reminder email about it. So that you think is different from then maybe like an onboarding automation sequence where it's like, hey, have you checked in? Right. Have you joined the your, Slack community? Have you joined the Slack community? Yeah. Have you set your goal in the dashboard? Started a roadmap? Have maybe, you started? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna do. The good and the good thing about that is that it, it shouldn't be an ongoing monthly task. We should be able to write that sequence from the beginning and then just tweak it when we get feedback from people. Okay. I'm gonna put onboarding email sequence. So that really to me is what gets someone from purchase to retention because you're then saying, Hey, you're constantly reminding them of, of like using this thing. Yeah. And then, so this idea that we had of this guinea pig case study idea, which is the thing we just talked about, which is like the public, someone's going through it. We're sharing the calls. The yeah. But let me explain it a little bit more in depth. So the idea would be that somebody in the community basically raises their hand, volunteers as tribute, as they like to say, and says, Hey, I want you guys to publicly coach me. Um, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z or whatever. We get on a live call. We give them recommendations for how they can meet their unique goals. And then we check back in with them three months later. So then the check back in, hopefully they've done what we've said, they've seen great results. And then that feeds the customer success story for the previous stage that we mentioned. Is that That's, what you're thinking? Sure. But what's also really cool, if you guys just had this thought that I did, was that if we use the quarterly theme, along with the guinea, guinea pig, pig case study, we can have one person going through that public, publicly with us and we're helping them and everyone else can kind of be along with it. Mm -hmm. So you get the public updates as mm -hmm. well. And I mean, I think it's public, but it's also you're getting emails as members about mm -hmm. it. That actually seems really cool. That ties everything in together. Yeah. And I think it accomplishes a lot in one fell swoop. Yeah, because then you're getting a real purse A, you're also ensuring that you do have some sort of customer success story because my my hypothesis is that that person who's the guinea pig is going to feel super accountable. So they're going to actually use our products, use yeah. the dashboard. Yeah, they wanna show off, they want the gold stars. Yeah, and then, so you're ensuring that you do have this customer success story framework for people. Um, and then also the bet is that if people follow along with what that person's doing, they too are gonna have some sort of goal that they reach at the end of those three months that uh, we can then publish their stories. Um, so I'm writing down that we're thinking this guinea pig idea is gonna be a quarterly thing. Yeah, I think that's a really good combination of those, don't you? I do. And then if I'm the person who's just in the purchase stage, I just signed up, I'm not really using it yet, Maybe I get the email about with the update of this game. Katniss. We Katniss. Yeah, just her, her name happens to be Katniss. Yeah. <laughs> we get the email update. So Katniss is doing. She's the guinea pig. She's the guinea pig. Yeah. We have this update about Katniss who had just hit like a big milestone. Good job, Katniss. And that gets me as someone who's just have purchased into the now retention stage because I'm like you know what, Katniss is doing a really great She's job. She's doing great. I'm gonna log back into the dashboard. I'm gonna take easy course. I haven't taken that. I knew, I thought I was going to, but I didn't. Your name could be Gabe. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go with a Hunger Games name. Oh, you I thought not. that's what it was. <laughs> you thought it was Gabe? Yeah, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? It's Katniss, and then it's... Mike? <laughs> Liam Henderson. It's Liam Henderson. Where'd I get Gabe? Henderson. Where'd I get Gabe? Hemsworth. Where'd I get Gabe? Who is Gabe? <laughs> Katniss, uh, everyone, Peta, Peta Millar. No, we are not gonna have. You're Who's not the other one? Peta. Exactly. What's his name? Also, so many team people Peta, who, are, who are watching this right now are like, his name is, and they're screaming it at their phones. I got no, it. No, I got no, 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 no. What's his no, name? No. Also, team. I need everyone to know while this was happening, our dog's wet nose was pressed up against my foot, and it was freaking and out, and it felt like a wet sock. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that is gonna be. I really like that. I okay. like I like the way that that fits together of like quarterly objective, quarterly thing. People are joining. We have a public version of it. So that's... I'm putting this in a square as well sure. because that's gonna that's take gonna like take follow time. up and yeah. stuff. Okay, and then adding new courses and dashboard features. These, this is big. Right. Because these are also like separate things. Right. So we're gonna have to think about adding new content to the dash dashboard and we're gonna have to think about improving the dashboard experience. Who's gonna do all this work? Do you guys wanna do this work for free? Probably not. I mean, I'll pay you in Spindrift. Mm -hmm. Babe, we're gonna do this work because it's gonna be so fun. All right. Like, this is fun. Okay, what's our action step? God, I love worksheets. Um. <laughs> 
Okay, so the action step would be that a person adds a course or a roadmap to the dashboard and or takes one course. So anything that gets them to be using the dashboard in some way. Okay. To me, that's the action step. Okay. Now they're in the retention stage. Okay. Because the hope is we believe in our product enough that if someone just uses it, then they will be... Lose it. Stop. We believe in our product enough that if someone is using the dashboard, hopefully they are retaining. I mean, if somebody does, you know, can't get themselves to use the dashboard, we can't do anything about that. It's out of our control. Yeah. Okay. Now, stage five is retention. And then the following stage, stage six, is what we call loyalty. So you're not just getting someone to use your product and, and kind of um, have it be a utility for them, but now you're having them form an emotional connection with it and they're gonna be loyal to your brand and to your product. And so for us, getting someone from retention, which is just utility, remember, to loyalty, which is like an emotional connection, is uh, the customer boxes. So that's forging like an important bond with them that they're saying, oh, these people really care about me. It's personal. If you are unaware of what this is, uh, when someone signs up for Wandering Aimfully, we want to send something in the mail that's like a little bit smaller, but handcrafted something. And then at a certain point, if you've stayed on for let's say like three months or six months or what have you, we want to send another thing in the mail. And our goal is that sending personalized custom things in the mail is something that most people with the membership community don't do. And it just takes a lot of extra work and extra time. But we have seen that people really love and appreciate the handcrafted touch. And I very much love doing it. It is one of the things that I really want to do with this. Um, and so I think I it's love one of the idea of it. Yeah, just the actual execution of it, not yeah. your favorite thing, so. Um, I added welcome gift to right. the previous Purchase. one, because to me, whatever yep. That'll that- That'll take time. Well, yeah, and like, to me, the welcome gift, which is like something, it's more of a flat, like envelope thing. We haven't figured out exactly what it is yet, but that's what they get in the mail when they sign up to be- It's like they get this worksheet, <laughs> and they get a pen, and an, an eraser, eraser- And not a spin drift. And not a spin And drift. so that would, would help get someone from purchase to retention, but then the personalized box is the thing that's, that Jason's talking about, which is probably three months in, yep. and that helps to like really solidify the loyalty thing. Okay, so another thing that I wrote down was the quarterly calls, because to me, if you, if you are logging on to a live call, like a quarterly call, you're, that's getting you to a place of loyalty. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah. Okay. Like that's the purpose of it. And then of, of course, you know, answering questions in Slack and just being there to- That's them being there. No. This is, so remember- This is stuff we're doing. This is stuff we're doing to get them from just using the dashboard to then- being loyal to our brand. Got it. So when we give answers in Slack and when we talk to people and give them personal attention in Slack, we're hopefully moving the needle from them just being like, oh, I use this thing to like, oh, I really love this thing and I don't want to stop paying for it. Got it. That makes sense. My mind wandered. Yeah, it's okay. And then so the action step there would be if they participate in, a, in the Slack community or they or they give us a testimonial to up. That's, that's where my brain went. What? was like, how do you see that someone is becoming a loyal member yeah, and it's, and it's that. that they're participating. Yeah. So if someone's in Slack or if they have opted to give us a testimonial, to me that means that they're loyal to the brand. Yeah. So, or probably you could sit, you could argue like they hit the six month mark of um, using oh, us. Yeah. yeah. Using us? <laughs> <laughs> My brain don't work. Okay, so that's, can you think of anything else in that category? I think other stuff will come up organically. I think that's the stuff that like for right now, I mean, we have so much stuff we have to do. I know. Um, I think that's good. Okay. So, and then lastly, to get someone from a place of loyalty to then a place of advocacy, which is slightly different because loyalty is like, oh, I really love this thing. And you know, I have an emotional connection with it and I don't want to stop paying for it. Advocacy is like, I love it so much that I'm going to go out of my way to then tell other people about it. And so how can we get someone to being a loyal fan to then advocating for us? And we haven't talked about this, but something like an affiliate program. Right. Which we've loosely tried uh, for the, since 2016 mm -hmm. with by my future slash by our future, um, we had partners. So as people who were existing members, they could get their own URL, they could share that URL and get people to sign up. And I think the, out of the total 415 people who purchased by our future, by my future over the years, I would say fair guess is 10 to 15% of those people. So around 40 to 50 customers uh, came from existing members using their links. So 
It's not bad. It's nothing to poo poo, uh, especially with the price tag that we had. So that's that's what I was going to say. Is yeah. It's a whole different ball game when you're asking people to promote something that's two thousand dollars versus asking someone to promote something that's a hundred dollars. Right. And and it. I mean, listen. We may get, you know, some of our best customers through the people who are being affiliates of Wandering Aimfully. Um, but the goal here is to make sure, I, th I think we want to make the determining factor that you cannot be an affiliate of Wandering Aimfully unless you are a member. Oh, of course. Well, all right, of course it well, is. Well, if you, if, you, if you would just bring your attention to the worksheet, they've already gone through stage four purchase. Right. So you can't just jump on in. I just meant more like, yeah. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're, you don't have access to this unless you're, and probably unless you've been a member for I don't know how long. I don't know. Cool. So. Also something we haven't even talked about is there are other options here, like sh fun, like sharing campaigns where it's like, this is no bad idea to brainstorm, but something off the top of my head is like, hey guys, we have sales windows opening up. Like if you share X, Y, and Z about your experience like we'll choose one person to get a cool thing from us or whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like just promoting advocacy. If you can get advocacy. two friends under you, <laughs> and if they can get two friends under you. You will get a Mercedes. Well, the idea is that we want to build a pyramid of customers. It's not so much a pyramid as much as like a triangular shaped 3D right. type of a model. Yeah, so this is you, yeah. and you just want to fill in all, all the space underneath. with other your friends. I think we're all on the same page. <laughs> When you put it that way. Okay, so offer an affiliate program. As a disclaimer, program. that was sarcasm, and we do not promote pyramid, pyramid schemes. No, we don't. Uh, just to put a pin in this, or actually add a little bit more information to it. Um, that would take on, so we are, don't even put a dotted thing yeah, on here. We have thought about a 30% commission ongoing for life. So if, uh, if Katniss, gets her friend PETA to sign up. We're not a huge fan of PETA and what he does, we're, but like- We're a bigger fan of Gabe. <laughs> yeah, Gabe. We really want Gabe to sign up, but he's, he's doing his own. He's like traveling for six months. He's not gonna sign up. But PETA's really interested. She gets PETA to sign up. Uh, PETA still pays the $100 price, but then Katniss gets- 30 bucks. Uh, 30 bucks uh, every month. For as long month, as PETA is a month. member. Yeah, which is kind of cool. So maybe Katniss is like, PETA, you've been checking into Warner and Ampli? What have you been doing? Come on, PETA. Come on, um, PETA. All right. Okay, so, so an affiliate this program. Is and then what else is down there? Then there to advocacy. No, no, no. Create resources for easy sharing. You didn't oh, want to talk yeah. about that. But that, to me, that's not ongoing. Okay. So that's just us being like, hey, here's a cool graphic or here's like some. So we would have some type of like kit, uh, yes, a brand kit. kit for people kit. for sharing uh, stuff. So that would be like Instagram assets, maybe short videos of us, other things. Like copy that they can swipe copy. Swipe copy. Swipe, swipe tweets. Um, and then, my friends, if they become a WAM affiliate or they promote Wandering Aimfully on their own channels, they have moved to stage seven advocacy. They are now telling their peeps, and their also, peeps are coming in at the top of the sifter and it is a circle of life. It's the circle of life. So off key, so bad. I don't think you've ever been on key. Uh, I think one thing that's very important to mention here is that advocacy for us does not mean being an affiliate. Advocacy just means they're so excited to talk about wandering aimfully to their friends or, or it doesn't have to be just the membership. And I think that's the part of this customer journey marketing plan is that while we do want people signing up for the membership, we're only going to allow 300 people to sign up. So at a certain point, hopefully the goal is our advocates can only get people to sign up for our email list to hear about our weekly content and to sure. become, th because yeah, we're not no, actually going to have continual paying yes, customers. That is a very good point. So uh, remember, we're just trying to get people that are now in this sifter to then feed people to the top again. So we don't need a, you know, we don't need an advocate to then have somebody skip down to purchasing the membership. As long as they're telling their people that this is something that they should look into, we know that we're gonna have to work to get that person from all the way from stage one to stage four again to purchase. Um, and we have no expectation of like, well, you're not an advocate unless you're getting people to actually purchase and sign. No, it's like, hey, if you just wanna tell people that you think we're cool, We'll do the rest, like that's fine. All right, uh, we have currently so been talking for almost an hour, which is crazy. Uh, we like to talk. I think we should try and get through this in the next uh, 15 to 20 okay. if we can. And I'm not necessarily saying that for us, but more for the people at home. Like, I don't know how long your attention span is for these things. So um, Caroline is currently writing down all the things that were in squares. So we have the next part of this that we want to do is assign estimated hours for how long it's going to take us to do those things, um, block off what our weeks would look like if we were just to kind of put those hours in a week, and then see 
what that actually would feel like for us to be doing that on an ongoing basis if we wanted to kind of keep the schedule uh, going. And thankfully, some of these tasks are um, not daily things. So, and they're not even weekly right. things uh, for us to have to keep up with. So I think that's important to also note. Like, it's a lot of stuff, but it's also not a lot of stuff that happens, has to happen every single week. Missed opportunity to not call the guinea pig case study like Katniss's Katniss. journey or something. It's okay. Well, you're more clever than I am. You guys heard it here first. You heard it here Newsletter. first. Newsletter. Hey, by the way, while we're sitting here watching Carol write this stuff down, are you enjoying this? Do you want to let us know in the comments? <laughs> <laughs> Fishing for compliments. Fishing for compliments. It's like a vote. Like it's like a Vogue. Yeah. That was voguing because I was doing that. Oh, my you know I can't talk and write at the same time. No, I, I know, know which why is why you're it's trying fun. Trying to engage me in conversation. Which is why it is fun. New courses. Are these all out of order, or did you do this in order? There is a method to my madness. Uh, it looks out of order. I hate writing in pencil. I hate what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, so I don't think actually the the onboarding sequence is an ongoing thing. Is an ongoing thing because I think we do that before launch. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing off the list. Ooh. It's probably a dotted line because we would go in and tweak it here and there, but that's okay. We're not gonna mince words, you know. I like how you thought you had to use pencil for this part. Like you didn't. No, have to it's use this part. I know, but you didn't have to use it for that part. Um. So I did the guinea pig quarterly. Just FYI, we usually feed Plax about this time, so he's gonna get start it's to get fine. real stir crazy. That's fine. So you guys Black. just have to deal with him. Deal with it. Whoa. Okay, I think I got it all. Okay. So these are the general things. Let me read off what's in these boxes. You can tell me if you wrote it down. Method to your madness. YouTube videos. Yep. Instagram. Yep. Blog content. Yep. Podcast. Yep. Weekly newsletter. Yep. I added the word weekly. Okay. Customer success stories. Yes. Welcome gift. Yes. Personalized customer boxes. Yes. Different than welcome gift. I said, I called that loyalty boxes. All in one? I mean, no, I se it's separate, but I just renamed it. I'm letting you know. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Um, we have do, 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 guinea pig case study. Yep. We have adding new courses. Yep. We have dashboard features. Yep. We have quarterly calls. I put that under guinea pig quarterly. Because the only on, because like, we just need to go live on that. The only ongoing thing that we actually need to do is like the program. I'm calling it a guinea pig quarterly program. Program. Okay. Katniss. Still a quarterly call though. Like the whole call is not dedicated to Katniss though. I know, but we don't need any ongoing work. All right. We just, we make the agenda the morning up and we, we say hey to everyone. That's it. Slack. Just you missed down. Slack. Ha ha. I win. No, I said Slack. No, you didn't. You already said yes. No, you didn't. Slack wasn't, wasn't on there. Oh, it's perfect. There, it's an even number. There's even two Steven. columns. Did you um, do a little spittle? No, it's my, my coffee. Do you All think right. it is? Because it's not brown. Excuse me, we're trying to. All right, let's go. Over to you, Bob. All right, so walk me through what you want me to do. So <laughs> we want to look at one of these categories, yep. say what's in it, and how long we think it's going to take. What, okay, so that's why I wrote these down, was to write down sort of like the ongoing tasks associated with it, how long those are going to take on a weekly basis. Yeah. Unless it's monthly and then it's a monthly basis. Right. And then we do this. Okay, so let's start, let's just start where we are here. Yep. So YouTube. Yep. Uh, our goal is to eventually get to three videos per week. That yep. was like the goal that we put out. We are not gonna start with three videos per no. week. It's gonna be too much. So we are 100% going to do the show. Yeah. Um, my thought is, is that weekly, what we might also be able to do is pull one nugget out of the show mm -hmm. and do an individual video for that that's like four to six minutes in length. So we have like a shorter video that's just on one topic, mm -hmm. and then we have the show video, which is longer about this length of content. Now, are we gonna do any ongoing unedited meeting stuff? We are going to do that, but, but I think really... that falls into the category of our travel videos, where that's like a monthly thing or something like that. It's so not this. It's not this. It's if we can I don't fit it in. I don't think we have to categorize that time because it's like, that'll just kind of fall in. Okay. All right, so do we want to estimate that? Yeah, I'm also putting, since the podcast is also what we film, it's the audio from that, I'm kind of putting the videos and the podcast under one show category, and this to me is any additional YouTube stuff. Okay. Does that make sense? So am I doing this just for weekly? That's what we said? Just weekly basis? Unless it's monthly. Okay, so a, a show episode, mm -hmm. I'm going to estimate it's going to take 
two hours to record. So that's set up, that's discuss the things, that's get ready for it, that's have any nuggets or things that we wanna have ready for the show. Um, that's just the recording of the show, breaking down equipment, setting yeah. equipment. So it's two hours. Um, it, it will take me three times as long as the length of the thing to edit, edit it, color correct it, and potentially upload. So let's just say that it's an hour and a half, so it's gonna take four and a half hours, round up to five hours to uh, edit that. Okay. So that is one show. Yes. So our nugget video yes. is probably going to take 30 minutes to an hour brainstorm to like yep. flesh that out, so let's say one hour. Yep. Uh, safe bet, one hour of filming, so yep. that, you know, setting things up, moving things around. It's wait, 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 remember? Oh, because you're gonna film the you talking about it. Yes. Okay. So one hour of filming, and then that video is going to be four to six minutes, and I think it will take a little bit longer to edit uh, than the like 3X rule, because that's got a lot more going on. So I'm gonna say, let's just put two hours for that to be safe. So total hours for YouTube slash show. show would be, this is seven. We went away from pencil. <laughs> okay. This is seven. Okay. And this is four. Okay. So like 11 on a week, normal weekly so basis. So 11 hours per week on video. Yeah. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this like weekly hour. I should hour have put these next to each other, huh? Totals, that's fine. I got a whole other thing over here. I hope this is interesting to you guys. Okay, okay so I'm gonna say, um, so, Wame show, how many hours? 11. 11 hours. And then um, YouTube Nugget oh. is, Sorry. I wanted them separate. Okay. Yeah. So, so the show is how long? Seven. I hate having to write over. I hate you it so that. much. You should use I pencil. hate it so much. Okay, so. <laughs> I love how much you hate it. I hate it so much. I know, babe. Okay, so that's those. So okay. we'll come back and we'll organize them once we have the chunks uh -huh. of time. Okay. All right, so Instagram, this is. Yeah, so it depends on how much we, let's talk about like minimum versus maximum because I could see a situation where we edit snippets of the show to I think be we should on Instagram. absolutely do at least a day of show episode going live, a story about the show and a post about the show. A story and a post. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put show, story, show, post. I just have no idea. So... So I, I think it'll take um, probably a half hour to just put together, like, grab a couple clips from the show that we can kind of like back to back put on there and like export those. So I would say that's that's probably a half hour. So if you want to add anything to them illustratively or et cetera, um, that's just me giving you But I was you also thinking clips. like, remember when I did the post that had the little timer bar and the, the thing with like the, the takeaway? I can get much faster with that. Right. Like if that, I have a template in After Effects, I can just swap out the video. Right, but that took how long in that first one? Probably. Well, it took like an hour for me to do. Oh, I think it took more than that. Well, yeah, but I, it's not, I didn't have a template. I had to right. rebuild the whole thing. So I would say safe bet is one hour on just the post mm -hmm. if you're gonna do that. If version. it's gonna be a video. Yeah. And then, and maybe I do like another little hand lettered quote or something like that. Yeah. So that's probably an hour for the story an hour for the post, mm -hmm. that's just for the show. Just for the show. Okay. Let's just be generous and say that's three hours to make assets, sharing assets from the show. Okay. That's a for, lot. That's for people who think social media is just like, oh yeah, share yeah. or something. Um, and you may and be thinking like, what guys, you do it so much faster. And I'm sure we absolutely could. It's just in the but beginning. It's trying to like overestimate time so that we can see like. And it's also it? in the beginning, we're not gonna have a system. So it's, we're right. just trying to be really generous here. Okay, so then on top of that, let's say programming weekly posts. Yeah. And I like to get, I kind of like that to be a creative process, which is why it takes me more time because I enjoy it. So I, th I think I, it's safe to say two hours. Two hours is what I was gonna say yeah. as well. Okay. So that's that. Okay. And then let's just say one hour during the week added up in terms of replying to comments and I really want to get back into storying when when it's, you know. Yeah. So, so right. total, so that's three plus two is five, six hours. Okay. Tally so far, 17 hours. Okay. 
All right, so weekly newsletter. Okay. Let's go to that. Um, I believe it will take uh, between, so the way that we're thinking about the newsletter, if you haven't caught up, is Caroline is going to write a newsletter and it's going to be like, hey, this is a, a story or a thing or a lesson and I'm gonna write about this and then she's going to pass it on to me and I'm going to come back in and be like, here's an action step or here's a thing or here's whatever. And it may switch, I, I may write one, but I think for the starting out, we're gonna have Caroline be the lead on that. Um, and then I will pass it back to her. If I've added anything, she will clean it up, uh, format it in drip, uh, which is our email provider. We'll, and then we'll already have our template set up. We'll have anything set up kind of below that. If we want to do a call out to a show or we want to do a call out to whatever. Um, so I believe it's going to take six hours Total. for one newsletter per week. That's generous. I think it's actually pretty realistic. So I don't think there's anything else to that. So I think that's it for okay. newsletter. And yeah, cause that includes like uh, scheduling it and stuff. And you guys may be thinking like, what? I've gotten your emails. Those don't take six hours. Uh, I've some of the emails that I've written, which are actually like their articles kind of first and then they become an email have been like 40 hours. So it can take a long time. Deceiving. Deceiving. Okay, uh, let's go to blog content. Okay. So on a weekly basis, we are probably not going to be creating a new article every week going forward, which is nice. Yes. But we will be working on one guide per month is kind of our goal. Um, and so I would say just to be safe, if we know that it takes about 40 to 60 hours to make a pretty good guide, not even like a ridiculously thorough guide, but like a pretty good guide. Um, That's writing, editing, picking which quotes to uh, pull out, formatting it in WordPress, adding images, uh, making graphics for it, uh, the manual work it takes to add the table of contents, which you'll see on the design. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So I would say safe bet 10 hours per week dedicated to blog content. Okay. So whether that's guides. Cool. So blog content. I just really am so curious if everyone at home who's still listening this far is just like squirming in their chair like, are you guys kidding me at how many hours we're spending on this stuff? This is our life. Don't you slam a panel book like that. I just mean like when you like the work that you do and you want it to be great and you have a high standard of quality, like there's nothing else I'd rather be spending my time on yeah. work-wise. All right, so. let's jump to Slack because okay. it's an easier one for me to think about an answer. It's just like a daily. Yeah. I would say on average, every single day, I am in the Slack channel at a minimum one hour. Um, actively? Pretty actively yeah. one hour. Usually throughout the, the morning, whole day. Throughout like a, yeah. yeah. Um, and I would like to do it more. Yeah, so I oh, think- you know what we didn't do? Uh-oh. It would have probably helped if we had assigned J or C to these because that's why I did our individual calendars. Oh. Um, but we can just do it when, once yeah, we add it fine. to the calendar. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so I think Slack, safe to say, if we just do one hour per day, that makes sense to me. So it'd be seven hours per week. I mean, I'm probably realistically going to have to spend less than that. Like, it's just not realistic for me to spend an hour in there, but I would love to check in and yeah, maybe, I, I would love to check in for like 15 minutes, three times a, So I haven't been thinking day, about these hours, as you just mentioned, as like you or me, like these have been kind of like combined Together. hours. Okay. So. Okay, yeah. so one hour for both of us. Yeah. Not, not each of us, both of us. Right, okay. so seven total hours. Right. In Slack. And that may be, you know, that time also allocates for like hopping on a call with someone or what have you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. The welcome gifts. So considering that's going to be a once a month thing that we do. Right. Um, it usually takes, just to give you guys a little bit of background, so um, we're not the boxes that we used to do are a little bit more in depth than the welcome gifts are going to be. But if I was to think about it, I would say um, you painting the envelopes takes about two hours? Yeah. Between like painting, waiting, going and painting again. Is yeah. that safe? Yeah. So let's say two hours for that, um, getting the supplies. So like ordering them online, we could just say, maybe that's one hour because that's thinking and planning. So that's uh, three hours there, going and getting stuff. If we have to go and get stuff, let's say that's another two hours. So that's five hours. 
uh, and then printing off the labels and taking them to the uh, post office is probably about two hours there. So it's seven hours, I would say a month. Yeah. So safely, let's break that down to two hours per week. Well, instead of, because it is very monthly, I think we should put that in a different category and kind of like first do the like weekly, weekly stuff and then just have caveats on the monthly cal calendar. You know what I mean? Okay. Does that make sense to you? I mean, yeah, I was just trying because, to look at Because our... like, I'm trying to make this practical. And you if just we... asked me a question and didn't even let me answer. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, now I forgot my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a very good answer. So the point I'm trying to make is if we're trying to make this super practical, it's not practical to say something is gonna actually take us seven hours at once a month oh, let's break it down by two hours a week. We're, that's not real time. That's like theoretical time. So let's just stick to real time. Meaning let's, the stuff that's weekly, let's fill out the calendar for that. And then the stuff that's monthly, let's just, like I said, add a kind of okay. okay. So I feel like you're still kind of doing like, okay, but it's- No, I just, I, I think the monthly stuff is tough to fit in. Like, I'm not sure how that's gonna fit in. And I think if we don't like ghost off blocks of time, it's hard to see where it fits in but if it's not that much time like if it's seven hours then we just know that that's like one day a month but don't you see how if we ghost in time on a weekly basis like are we actually doing anything during that ghosted time i mean we might be we might be ordering the supplies you might be painting the envelopes like we could well break. that's what i'm saying so right. that's very practical right. so if you prefer so we could do it one of two ways if you want to do it like we did before which is like we devote a saturday to it and we just that's what we do on I saturday i think that's fine let's do it that way because i think that keeps your sanity and it won't be like an ongoing thing that kind of drags okay. drags you down okay so it's not your favorite exercise okay so it's not going to go on the so this will be the monthly Another category. Now, another uh, thing to think about is we could combine some of this time by doing the welcome gifts and the loyalty boxes at the same time. We could. What I was just going to say is let's just double it. Okay. Because think about it this way. Are we doing loyalty boxes for all the existing members? Or, yeah. How does that work? No. What do you mean? So all the buyer future people, unfortunately... You're not getting loyalty boxes. Well, they got their boxes. That's true. They did. Forgot about that. <laughs> cool. Good job, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I would love for them yeah. to get another one, but like, you know, the whole point of doing it for the Wandering Aimfully people is that the buyer future people got them, so we shouldn't keep that going. So that may not end up being 14 hours. No, but I think it's, it's yeah, I think it's one solid day. Yeah, I think it's good. Okay. All right. Now... So let's go dashboard features. Uh -huh. um, I do think we that should have some type of weekly dedicated time where we talk about what are the features we're working towards. Maybe we use that that six week kind of sprinting framework that. Yeah, thirty seven signals talk mm -hmm. about. Base camp. Base camp. Um, I don't even know really where to begin with that. Right, let's just carve know. out two hours. Per two week. hours a week. Okay, yeah. I think that's fair. Lame. And that might just be two hours of like brainstorming in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Babe, this is like got me excited. Well, calm down. Like before we turned on the camera, I was like kind of dragging today, but now I'm excited. I'm like, this is what it's gonna be like you when sure it's that's launched. Not the coffee? That's definitely coffee yeah. induced, but also excitement induced. So new courses, I would say let's do the same thing. Two hours a week? That's gonna be so much more. I mean, I understand that it new courses slash tools that we're like trying to build. Okay, well now you're speaking a language this, there. Well, what I <laughs> what I mean is like new stuff. Yeah, new products. New products, which we haven't really ever prioritized time, which could also be used for improving products. Like, yeah. Um, I definitely want to go through and improve and like shorten up some stuff. Okay. Um, this is also something where I think our first month, like maybe September should be devoted, to, this time should be devoted to improving maybe our top products. Maybe. I think improving is like a couple months down the road once we have an efficient sales cycle going. Because I, I think what true. we don't want to do is like spend time improving true. and people aren't buying. Okay. Um, all right, let's say three hours. So let's a go, week. yeah, let's go one one more and we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay. All right. And so, then the, the like guinea pig Katniss stuff. Is so what we Katniss's journey. Um, 
I think realistically knowing how long I've spent doing that for an existing buyer or future person, um, it's really not more than like two hours per month. Is how with that spend person. On it. Right. I know. I'm just that's... saying that's been like the baseline. Yeah. So thinking about if we're writing an article, if we're doing a call, if we're doing that, I would say probably two hours per week is a fair amount. Um, because it may some weeks be no time at all, but then other weeks it may be like four hours working on the blog post or like categorize, like documenting what we did. Right. So I or think two hours, with, like, I think two hours content. a week is fair. Just to estimate now and we can figure it out because okay. it doesn't exist yet. Yeah, and maybe that's what'll help prevent us from like getting in a working to live scenario or a future finding scenario where we're like consumed by it because we've been thinking about the content. You know right. what I mean? All right, so two hours for Katniss. Did you count like working with the person though? Yeah. So how much did you say total? Two hours per week. Okay. So eight hours total per month. Katniss, this is really sticking. Katniss. Katniss program. At least for this video, you know, so all the hungry is down there. Two hours. All right, okay. so that's all I got. customer success story well, stuff. Well, that's like kind of wrapped in, right? Because that's writing the recap almost. He's just stretching. Yeah, he's just excited. He's gonna stare at himself in the mirror. All right, so. I'm feeling like that's gonna take more time, but it's okay. That's all right. So total hours that we have written down for weeks, 11, 23, 33, 42, 47 total hours for let what me, we have Let here. me double check your math. 17, 23, 33, 40, 45. What did I say? 42. 10, 20, 33, 40, 45, 47. <laughs> you went from 42 to 47. Yeah, because there's five at the bottom here. So did you write down Wayne dashboard? Oh, did you separate these? What? These are monthly oh, down separate. here. Oh, separate, yeah. Did I do Wayne dashboard? Nope. Didn't write that down. Huh. That's why we check our work, ladies and gentlemen. Two hours, so it's 47. Yeah. Okay. And that's among both of us. That's actually doable. No, that's total hours of both of us working on that's it. That's totally doable. Absolutely. Feel good about this. All right. So. Do you wanna go move over to our calendar worksheet? I do. So we are going to move to our week, correct? I want Stop. to make Stop. this pretty, but I'm gonna pencil it and then I'm gonna decorate it, you obviously. You can decorate it later. Cause this could be a fun exercise that we help people do going forward. Yeah. It could be planning out like how your business operates and you could do this on a monthly basis. No, sir, come lay down, come lay down. All right, so. You are a very loud snapper. Thank you. Left hand? No. Pretty good. Right hand? Really good. Left hand. Pretty good. Oh my God, I think I'm better on the left. Hey, no, lay down. Guys, I'm a better snapper on the left. What does that mean about me? Lay down. Whoa! Lay down. That is so good. Wait. Lay down, please. Do you lick your fingers? Oh no. Ugh. Doesn't that go better? Uh. No. I'm really uh. bad at that. Uh. Okay. So Monday we have kind of always talked about is like not a great day to jump into video or anything Calls. like that. I go no calls on Monday. But you've done a good job in the past when you were writing consistent weekly newsletters that Monday was like a writing day for you. Yeah. A lot of times because the newsletter had to go out. So I'm thinking Monday might be a good day because here's another thing that we wanna do is we wanna get a bunch of things in the hopper ahead of time content wise. So that means weekly newsletters, we wanna be six to eight weeks ahead. Uh, podcast episodes, we wanna be six to eight weeks ahead. Uh, YouTube which nuggets, way, six means, to eight weeks ahead. Which by the way means you add up these and you multiply by six and you go, where do we fit in 36 hours in the next few weeks? And that's where we, that's our plan actually, yeah. is to like, uh, I think three weeks from now, we just put on the calendar, which we'll talk more about in a, probably a separate call, uh, is that we have a full week dedicated to wandering for the show and getting ahead. I like that you're calling these calls now, like everyone's out there. Yeah, it's just like a million people watch these, it's crazy. A million. All right, so we Monday. We could post on IGTV. They're not vertical. We could. <coughs> we could, but like, <laughs> who clicks into that? I want this. Um, all right, so let's say Monday is a writing day mm -hmm. and a Slack day. So Slack mm -hmm. is kind of always the first thing that I do in the morning anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna say for me, am I okay to say 8 a.m. on Monday, Slack morning? Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna like block this off. You're going in have? ink? Yeah, I don't care. I have a pencil for you. 
Nah, I'm tough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so realistically, I probably not work. I mean, I'm just always gonna say my like work work begins at ten. Yeah. So must be nice. I'm a boss. You can wake up at ten if you want. Well, 10 means I wake up at, I set my alarm at seven, I'm out of bed by eight, I drink coffee and have breakfast from eight, like if I get out of bed by 8.30, I've made breakfast, and then by 10 I'm- We like, don't care working. about your morning routine. Um, so what's interesting here is if I block off an hour for all of these- Yeah, you don't need to do that. We're going for total time, seven hours? Babe. No, 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 I know, I know. Yeah, seven hours. So. I I stopped with- I'm so concerned with you being an ink right now. <laughs> Here, listen. So I'm going to be the one that's in, this, in Slack the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's why I stopped at five, because I was like, I'll give Carol two of the seven hours here to block off on her calendar when she's gonna be in. So if you're in it for, what is it, 15 hours per day, 15 hours, 15 minutes per day, mm -hmm. or 30 minutes per day, so- 15 minutes a day, or 30 minutes a day would be two and a half hours during the week. Yeah, so I think that's that's puts us at seven and a half, but it's close enough because you probably won't do it. So why don't we say- 30 minutes a day? Yeah, 30 minutes per day for you. So I'm gonna do 15, and I would like to do 15 in the morning, 15 in the, in the afternoon. That would be a goal of mine. You didn't actually check back in in the afternoon? Sometimes I like to go in there when I'm like done with doing focus work, and I like to just like check in with people. All right. Okay, so maybe that's so. the first thing I do. So you get a little half blocker? Mm -hmm. I'm writing in pencil so that I can make it pretty later. I'm writing in pen because the world is definitive. I don't know what that means. No, neither. And then we just, it's pretty quiet on the weekends anyway. All right, so Slack is... You know what we also need to do, a la working to live, is like block off like gym and stuff on here too. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, really it's just the gym is like the only thing that, that like, is consistently. Well, yeah, and, but and like a adulting block and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to, so are you gonna put in time for newsletter writing then on yeah. Monday? So we said six hours total, so how much of that is writing do you think? I would say safe bet is maybe two three, three hours for you, in the morning. two hours for me. I think it would be good if like Monday was start a newsletter and finish a newsletter. So if that maybe was possible. like in the morning before lunch, I get it written. Yep. And then you after lunch. Yep. Try to like edit it. So one to two. And then I can turn back around in the afternoon before we go to the gym at three and try to get it form uh, formatted in drip. Okay. So one to two. This is newsletter. This is one to two. Is so the. This means this is the two o'clock block. So if you're going one to two, you need to go one from here to here. I did. I'm spending two hours. So you're going from one to three? Yeah, two hours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if we work out, then when am I going to put it in drip after we get back from the gym? Maybe. Okay. But maybe we don't work out on Mondays. And we like working out on Mondays. So okay. that's the tone for the week. Okay. I just think we should block so off three o'clock every day. Every day. All right, fine, do it. Dun, 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 because dun, dun, if we dun. don't work out, then we can like take a long walk. Now this, I really wonder if people are interested in watching us fill out a schedule of our lives. Well, hopefully, maybe we'll put up a, in the description, maybe we'll put just a really simple template and they can do it too. I don't see that happening. Okay, so that's three to four. And then, so then maybe like after we take plaques, the five o'clock hour, I can get it queued up. Okay. So remember this isn't, so our newsletters go out on Monday. So remember this wouldn't be the one for that Monday. This would be like- Future. 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 You but, did a hand motion like this, but it should have been this way. Future. Yeah. All okay, right, so, so that's that, newsletter. Is that newsletter? Yep. Okay. Uh, little check mark. Um, Slack is done. Okay, so I think we agreed that Tuesday feels like a good day for the show to be filmed. Filmed. Yes. Goes out on Monday. Yes. Okay. So the way that that broke down was approximately two hours for setup and record. 
Mm -hmm. So I think realistically start at 11. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? Mm -hmm. So 11 to one. On Tuesday? Two hour block. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we eat lunch after. Yep. So this is Wayne show. Good job. Now you're putting it on yours, but is it supposed to go on yours? Cause that's not the time you're not spending time on it. Filming the show. Right. But I don't want to, I don't want to have double the hours is what I'm saying. So I think the goal is like, I'm setting up what my hours are from this and you're setting up what your hours are. I want you to think about this for a second. Filming the show. I mean, I know that you need to be there. I understand. Okay. <laughs> if you know that I need to be there, Fine. why would I not put that on my calendar? Put it on your calendar. Fine. <laughs> All right. So Wait, I just need to make sure we're on the same page with this. You agree then. Right. I agree. The problem is that you, we estimated it based on like when we said two hours filming, it's really four hours. Right, because it's two hours for both of us. Okay, so we just should probably update that then. Well, no, because that then updates all the math. It's fine. It's okay. fine. Um, all right, so that's two hours. We should update it. But... After that, so how many total hours is it? Seven total hours? We filmed it, and then you're editing. So you're editing for five hours. So I'm going to do on Wednesday morning. Like when do you want to be like your editing day? Right. I am going to do, let's say this three hour block here is Wayne show edit. So that gets me to five hours. And then I think here, Wait, this gets you to three. What? It's five hours of editing. Okay. Yeah, so what I was gonna do is um, is block off two more hours. I got the net ad. Right, so like the evening of, and that'll be like dumping the footage, setting everything up. Okay, So this that makes is sense. Wayne. Now what if basketball's on? Show, what edit. On? Basketball's not gonna be on for a while, so we don't have to worry about that. Cool. And there's no football on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, so the Perfect. sportsman in me has nothing to watch. Cool. So that is the Wayne show done and on the calendar. Got it. Okay. Now, what about this little snippet? The YouTube nugget? Yep. Yeah. So I think it makes sense because then you're editing on Wednesday, you're figuring out what the takeaway is. Yep. So then maybe filming the intro on Thursday? The, the nugget? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So how long is the nugget? So maybe... Filming one hour, planning one hour. So, so two maybe... hours of filming. Right. So maybe we do, but do you want to do the me, planning? You're probably filming do you want to do the planning the same day? Like, do you want to do planning and then turn around and film right after? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the nugget is one hour plan, one hour film, two hours edit. But that's for, we should have doubled it because it's, we right. should have doubled the first two because we're probably well, doing that together. We have to double it. Just both put it on our calendar. Okay. Um, so let's do that. Let's say that's morning. Thursday morning. Uh -huh. So 11 a.m. I guess mm -hmm. is the planning. Mm-hmm. So 11 to, yeah, so this is planning. So this is YouTube nugget. And that's, and the planning is like writing, probably yep. writing a script basically. Yep. And then filming is one hour. So we'll mm -hmm. do that right after. Jump right in. Mm -hmm. So YouTube nugget film. Mm -hmm. And then. And then uh, two hours of you editing. Two hours of me editing. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna put that Friday morning. Okay. And then what I like is that could then, I like Friday for me being working on the Instagram assets for that. Okay. Which is like three hours total. Because then by that time you'll have the, the episode filmed. So I, I'll have like the takeaways and stuff. Yep. So then Friday morning, I'm just gonna have 11 to two with like lunch in between of. And I'll just put a little sliver on here of my time, which is YouTube nugget IG Carol. So that's like me giving you the clips 
that you need for the story. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long this is going to record for. This is one of our longer meetings here. Still going strong. Cool. Hey, you relax. You lay down. Okay. All right. So that takes care of the YouTube nugget. Mm -hmm. So that's one, two, yep, three, four. Come lay down. So did you get how much do you have for Instagram? That was just for the show. So then create like scheduling for the week. I think I could do that on Sunday. I th we talked about this. So we've had it as a recurring calendar item. It's I know, not a priority I know, right I know, now. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. What my uh, suggestion was, let's put it on the week, on the count, on a day on the calendar in the week, and just try this going forward and like set okay. up, set time for this. So are you saying you don't want to put anything on Sundays and Saturdays and Sundays then? Not right now, I don't think. Okay. So do you feel like so? On filming days, you're going to be tired and you're not going to want to dive into content stuff. So I would say... Well, sometimes, actually, I like after filming going into content stuff because it's creative. Yeah. My personal thought is that I think Wednesday morning is probably the best time for you to do social. Looking at our schedule, looking at what's going on, like, I feel like that's going to be... Because that'll be the day after the Wayne show, so we'll have talked about something, you'll be energized, you'll have that. I think that, to me, is the best time to just try and start okay, here. Okay, we'll try it. Okay. So what did I say? Three hours? I think we have a total of six hours for Instagram. I know. Cause that's the three hours for the show. Oh, that's three. Gotcha. Yeah. So then yeah, three hours. Okay. Lay down, bud. Lay down. I know. You'll be fine. You will survive. All right. So Instagram is on mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. All right. Blog content, 10 hours of blog content. Yeah, which is like writing a guide, like doing... And I think that is definitely like kind of five hours each-ish mm -hmm. is kind of how that would break down. Mm -hmm. So... This is why this starts to get good because you start to see we're running out of time where we're not working into the evening. Right. And also it's becoming unrealistic because we don't have any time to run errands, like do life stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So then it just becomes a question, would you rather commit to working a little bit later, which is doable, like especially when it's still light outside, I can I can easily work until seven. Well yeah, especially like hard. if your day starts at 10 ish, right. um, we take a two hour essential or like an hour break at least in the middle of the day for the gym or an hour and mm -hmm. a half. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. So for me, I know that like Monday mornings, I tend to get into a zone writing. So I would say okay. for me, I will probably bro block off three hours Monday morning. Okay, to work on guide stuff? To work on blog content. Mm -hmm. So I have two more hours for myself to put on the calendar here for this. And truthfully, I would probably do them early because that's when I tend to write best. So like I might do them on like Tuesday and Thursday in the morning. It's like one hour each. And this may sound extremely like regimented that we're setting up our schedules here, but the idea is that we it, just want to see what it looks like. And it gives you a structure. And, and and like have a structure that we can either stick to or not stick to. Okay, so my five hours are on the calendar. So, so when am I gonna do this? Yeah. Because I don't want to do it Monday because I'm writing a lot for the newsletter. Yep. Oh, sorry if the lighting just got really weird. This is where I think I would rather trade this three hour block on Wednesday mornings and make that writing and, and change this social to something else, like after filming or something. I just really don't think you're gonna be able to get into it after filming, but we can certainly try it. I'll tell you what I'm not gonna be able to get into after filming, writing, writing a guide. Content. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's true is that the social stuff is a little bit less heady. Yeah, it's more designed for me. Yeah. It's like, oh, I get to think of like a fun graphic or whatever. Look at this pencil coming in handy. Okay, so I'm gonna do three hours of the guide. It's blog content. Blog content. So maybe we'll do two hours of uh, Insta planning. Just lay down, bud. Just lay down. Lay down. And I think it's safe to say that Instagram probably is like an afternoon activity that you don't mind getting into. Mm -mm. Okay, so I reallocated my three hours. So I still need two hours of blog content. Okay. So let's say maybe an 
afternoon type thing. Yep. Tuesdays. Okay. 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 All right. All right, let's throw Katniss's journey on here next. Mm -hmm. um, so this is probably one hour each, I would say. Mm -hmm. Which I think makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably a good same time Thing? On the calendar exercise. Okay. So I think you have a Wednesday, like 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. So let's throw it there. Okay. Cool. okay. Now what? New products? Uh, now we have new products and Wayne dashboard, which both feel like Good Friday things. Mm -hmm. How about this? How about I just say that I have to keep the show Instagram to two hours? Like that's just what it is. There's no reason to spend three hours on that when we have things that are important like the dashboard and the new products. Sure. So another reason why this is helpful is you start to see, I actually can't spend that much time on that and yeah. it gives me a hard, so a hard container to work doing with. doing an hour what time? So at one o'clock on Friday. Okay, so we'll both do one hour. Of? Wayne dashboard. Okay. That'll take care of Wayne dashboard. Mm hmm And then one hour or one and a half hours for new products. Yep. And I don't, I don't feel like we ever work out on Fridays. Do you? No, we don't. So I feel like if we put content after that, okay. it would be fair Okay. for the new courses and tools. So from two to, to four, let's just say. Yeah. Ooh, pen, 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 pen. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Look at this eraser. I ain't worried about it, but I am worried about this video continuing. I don't know why. I just feel like an hour and a half is like a magical number for an iPhone, but it's still going I think strong. it's just based on memory, babe. Yeah. It's still going strong. So this is for new, like... We're personal. almost done, folks. If you've stuck around this long, number one... Yeah. Well, at this point, you probably got the picture. Yeah. Okay. Is that everything? Yep. Cool. So that's the week. Okay. And then do we want to kind of do the one, the monthly stuff mm -hmm. and at least just say, yeah, I mean, it feels like, it feels like we just block off, you know, a Saturday is great for the welcome box stuff. So it's just like a full Saturday, yeah. you know? And if we, if we're so always selling at right. the end of the month, mm -hmm. it's probably the first Saturday of After. the month. So didn't we say we're selling, we sell Wednesday to Wednesday? I don't remember what we I decided. I think we did. That's what we're doing for the first one, I think, yeah. I think we, because I think the idea was like our Monday newsletter, we say like, hey, it opens up on Wednesday. Send an email. Right, so let's just say that however the week falls, like the last Wednesday to Wednesday. Oops. You want to go the other way. Wednesday to Wednesday is the launch window. Uh-huh. I'm obviously going to redo this, so it's pretty. <laughs> um, and so then this Saturday is boxes, right? Well, is it that Saturday or is it this Saturday? I think it's this Saturday. No, it's the first Saturday after the, it closes. I know, but you have to remember, like, we have to get people's information. We have to get their shipping addresses. Oh. Look at that. Golly, that just works. <laughs> it's an eraser. That just works. It just works. <laughs> Good job, wow. Apple. Way to make erasers. Um, what? I don't know. <laughs> Getting delirious here. <laughs> okay, so this is boxes. Yep. Um... Any other, so any other like monthly, once a month things that are actually, that need to be like the week before, let's say. I don't think so. Like what we haven't put on here is like writing the sales emails, all that stuff. But like, that's not, that's, right. that's just automation happen. stuff. Right. All right. 
Well, how do you feel? I feel good. What I wanted to do was uh, count up the hours in your week. Okay. So. To write numbers at the bottom. <laughs> Why did this take so long? Well, because, like, I love you to death. So, when All I right, did. That's when fine. I, it's fine. We don't need the explanation. How many total hours? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 33. 27 for me. That's interesting. So you work six more hours a week than I do, as it should be. Well, I also rounded up. I said the gym is like an hour and a half. And you I... added the gym into your hours of working per week? Yeah. No, no, no. The idea was to add up just the amount of hours that were working per week. But you said... <laughs> the gym is just in there to counted, block it off. I just can't. So remove blocks. five hours then, so 28. <laughs> so we're pretty close. That's much better. So that's interesting, right? Like we were just talking about assigning all these hours, figuring out where they all fit, and it felt like, oh my gosh, like it's full day, it's all that. But it's only 27 hour work week, yeah, 20 hour work week. Yeah, and it's only because, it, again, I blocked off time for my, my slow mornings. We blocked off time for working yeah. out, which we don't do every day, but the days where we don't work out, that's an open block for us to, me do art, you- Life stuff. Life stuff, yeah. like take a walk, do whatever. And then we're just making sure we have all this time at the end of our days, which sometimes if we have to catch up, we just have to work at night and that's fine. And we also didn't block off our Saturdays and Sundays, which we typically do work. Yep. So you start to see this is like the basics and then the reactive, this is like the proactive stuff and then the reactive stuff can fill in the gaps. But unless you set the proactive stuff, chances are the reactive stuff is what's gonna actually fill up all your days, the emails, the like, oh, scrambling to put content together, that type of stuff. Yep. But if you actually block out your calendar, then you know what you're doing. Yeah, I think this is really interesting because when we set out to do this exercise, when we first talked about it, I think we were both like, we're never gonna have enough hours to do all this stuff. But then when you actually look at it with two people working on this, de deciding what is the most important thing that you wanna work on and really seeing it, you know, there are obviously a lot of other things in here we haven't accounted for. Like when we start to build a course, like you talked about, there's gonna be a lot more hours, but we'll be able to move stuff around. We'll know what's flexible, we'll know what's not. We'll be weeks ahead. And so one of the things we talked about was, um, you know, let's say we're working on a new course. Uh, if we're six or eight weeks ahead of our newsletter slash um, show schedule, well, guess what? We can literally clear out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and all those things yep. are already pre-done. So yep. we now have three full days that we can just dive headfirst into all that stuff. Not to mention, it gives you a really cool incentive to work more efficiently so that you can steal time. So like I was saying, I then can start to see, okay, I gotta finish up this course and I need an hour to do it. I'm gonna see if I can do the Instagram show stuff in one hour this week instead right. of two hours. So you start to be able to give yourself constraints, which I find helps me be really productive. Yeah, so. for sure. All right, well, uh, we will put links to uh, the- Super, to this worksheet, the customer C journey marketing plan. The CJMP, uh, really re memorable exercise. Um, we will link to the post that explains that worksheet so you can get that. Um, if we decided to give you these, I mean, you can make this yourself. Come on, you don't need us to give you a thing. I'll do it, I already have it. Uh, that's, uh, whatever. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this. Hope you left some comments at this point already. You paused and left lots of th thoughtful and helpful and lovely and Fishing wonderful comments. Fishing for compliments. And uh, yeah, just another unedited meeting of us building this business and taking you along on the journey with us. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.